Okay, it's about time we've talked about the Milky Way Galaxy, and specifically some of the more recent discoveries from the last few months that once again kind of surprised everyone. And that's because in the last few years, the Gaia telescope, combined with observations from other telescopes, has been consistently rewriting all of the fundamental knowledge we have about our own galaxy. But on top of this, in the last few years, there's also been some advances in observing a lot of other frequencies, including various frequencies that actually allow us to study magnetic fields. And so in 2024 alone, there's actually been several papers discovering new things about the magnetic fields, reviewing the Milky Way galaxy in different ways we've never seen it before. And so, hello and full person, this is Anton, let's discuss some of these new discoveries about the Milky Way galaxy and discuss some of this recent research with all of the studies, as always, available in the description below. And I guess here, let's begin with those discoveries in regards to various types of magnetic fields in our own galaxy. And that's because by studying polarization, we can generally start mapping the magnetic field even of various extremely distant objects. For example, we know that a lot of different gas in the galaxy is not really spherical. Most of it usually has some kind of an axis, with various particles aligning with the magnetic field, which can then be observed from planet Earth. And so as a result, we can actually study various gas clouds, or actually even stars, and various galactic structures, and then see if there's any magnetic field in them. And so as all of these grains align with the magnetic field, and as they emit polarized glow, we can start making these polarization maps, which can then allow us to measure magnetic fields in the entire galaxy. And well, looks like this year, the scientists have actually started to come up with new strategies and new techniques that started to produce huge magnetic maps of the entire night skies. For example, in one of the studies from just a few months ago, researchers used a new technique that helped them measure polarization of 1500 various stars which when combined with observations from the Gaia telescope, allow them to map magnetic fields with extreme precision. And although this is just a pioneering technique showing us what we can actually do in the future, this is a really important first step in helping scientists demonstrate that various types of starlight polarization, combined with the data from Gaia telescope that shows us the distance, can reveal an incredible complexity when it comes to magnetic properties of various types of gas in the galaxy. And so depending on polarization, different frequencies of light will actually move through ionized gas at slightly different speeds, which allows researchers to map all of this extremely precisely. And while well, one of the first discoveries from a separate paper, also in the description below, was trying to establish if the magnetic fields in the Milky Way were more or less uniform or a little bit more chaotic. And that's because based on previous assumptions, a lot of research showed that it should be more or less uniform with the field possibly following the disk shape of the galaxy and mostly changing as the disk changes as well. But once again by using Gaia telescope and by looking at distribution of stars and various nebula, here the researchers looked at the three-dimensional map of the magnetic field, discovering that it was not uniform at all. Here nothing seemed to follow any kind of a galactic plane and various magnetic fields were actually forming extremely complex shapes. But much more importantly, they also discovered that many of these fields and many of these magnetic lines were also interacting with stellar nurseries, very likely affecting the motion of gas and the motion of dust, and thus affecting star formation. Which actually explains how certain nurseries seem to form. In some cases it's actually difficult to explain if it was just gravity at work, with a much more likely explanation being very hectic and very unpredictable magnetic fields. But things get even more interesting in a separate study. Because here researchers focused on something even more extreme and even more mysterious. We're talking about the structure known as Erosita bubbles. And essentially it's an unusual structure that looks like bubbles coming from the center of the galaxy. But bubbles extending thousands of light years away from the galaxy, but only visible to X-ray telescopes. And so a while back it was actually proposed that there might be two possible explanations. Either this was some kind of a major emission from the central black hole, kind of like what we usually see in a lot of other galaxies, or maybe this was actually a result of extremely vigorous star formation millions of years ago. But it was very difficult to prove which of the answers made more sense. But this is exactly what's been done in this recent study. By once again studying polarization, and by identifying several magnetized structures inside these bubbles, 
researchers were able to reveal something we've never seen before. Here they discovered several magnetized structures reaching heights of over 16,000 light years that seem to be extremely organized and even formed an unusual thin filament that seemed to be 3.5 million Kelvin in temperature. But these filaments were coming from a very specific region. They were not coming from the black hole, but instead seemed to be coming from the end of the galactic bar of the Milky Way galaxy. But more specifically, this showed a direct connection to a star forming region at the edge of the bar, which seemed to be responsible for the formation of these bubbles. In other words, this actually confirms that it was not from the black hole, it did come from a star forming region, but not in the center of the galaxy like we previously thought, and instead at the edges of the galactic bar. And that by itself is a really important discovery, actually a somewhat unexpected discovery because it tells us something about galaxies like the Milky Way we've never known before. It essentially confirms that it's not just the active galaxies that can actually produce these bubbles or produce outflows, it's also quiet galaxies like the Milky Way. But in this case, all of these outflows are just the result of star formation in an extremely specific region that was actually discovered not so long ago. And so this seems to be a phenomenon very common to various Milky Way-like galaxies or essentially spiral galaxies that contain a galactic bar. And it's also a phenomenon that potentially explains how these galaxies grow in size and how they develop over time. Although interestingly, all of these magnetic fields are extremely well organized and seem to form these very thin filaments we've never seen before. And so it's actually these unusual long filaments of magnetization that reveal the origin of these bubbles by basically pointing at the source of the emission. And in terms of actual size, these are huge. Apparently, if we could actually see them, they would be approximately 150 times larger than the full moon. But because this is only visible with radio light, we're not going to be able to see them without specialized telescopes. But basically, this solves the mystery of Erosita bubbles. They're not from a black hole, they seem to be from a starburst region at the outskirts of the galactic bar, which is actually not that close to the center, maybe 10 to 16,000 light years away from the central black hole. But then, on top of this, a separate study, once again somewhere right there in the description, also revealed that the galaxy itself seems to contain huge magnetic toroids. And toroids really large in size, anywhere from 6,000 to 5,000 light years away from the center. And these toroidal magnetic fields, which are obviously still very mysterious and still not very well understood, would also very likely influence the galactic motion and various physical processes, including star formation. Although in this case, this was discovered by looking at pulsars. By studying polarized light passing close to various pulsars, scientists whose paper you can find in the description essentially created a magnetic map once again, discovering that the magnetic fields here seem to actually form a toroid that we do expect from basically any magnet. Which by itself is quite impressive. But apart from magnetic discoveries, there have also been some discoveries in regards to the galactic history and specifically various galactic collisions. And so essentially scientists discovered signs of galactic collisions or some other phenomena that seem to have affected the shape of the Milky Way galaxy. And here once again most of this came from the data from the Gaia telescope. And the most important discovery here, in my opinion, is actually this. The so-called Great Wave. And so in essence, the study by Poggio and his team discovered a really bizarre wave that seems to warp the galaxy in some way and seems to represent some kind of a major collision or some kind of a major event that happened billions of years ago. Now we don't actually know exactly what this is, it could be a galactic collision or maybe something else entirely, but here once again by looking at the data from the Gaia telescope that analyzes the motion of stars, and by comparing data from 16,000 young stars and also 3,400 Cepheid variables, they essentially discovered that many of them were oscillating as if they were moving along the wave. And not just some kind of a small wave, but a wave whose peak is approximately 650 light years in height with a wavelength of about 10,000 light years. And the wave that seems to be moving away from the center of the galaxy toward the galactic outskirts. And though previously we've discussed something known as the Radcliffe wave, an unusual wave-like structure extremely close to the solar system that was discovered not so long ago, in this case we're talking about something way larger, way more extreme, and something that seems to be across the entire galaxy. 
which is why it's referred to as the Great Wave, most likely a result of a galactic collision or interaction with some kind of a dwarf galaxy such as Sagittarius Dwarf, a massive galaxy that the Milky Way has interacted with for billions and billions of years. But in that sense, it makes our galaxy look like some kind of a rippling pond, as if something dropped in the center, which essentially formed waves propagating in different directions. But it's obviously not entirely certain what's happening here yet, and we'll most likely know more in the next few months. So, you know, subscribe and stuff, because we'll talk about this again. And then on top of this, we have a separate discovery in regards to various stars around the solar system. Here scientists analyze 800,000 stars approximately 3,000 light years away from the Sun, surprisingly discovering that the vast majority of all of them were actually pretty old, over 10 billion years old on average, with some of them as old as 13 billion years old. And that's actually a little bit unusual because it suggests that the majority of stars in the galaxy were potentially formed much, much earlier than we thought, with the galaxy itself maturing really quickly and very likely having some kind of a super intense star formation in just the first few billions of years. And so here the discovery is that our galaxy seems to be also much, much older and potentially developed pretty quickly, basically in the first billion years after the Big Bang. And the fact that the Sun seems to be orbiting in this region is also kind of difficult to explain. So basically our Sun, which is 5 to 6 billion years younger than these stars, seems to be a kind of an outlier. But then another intriguing study that essentially analyzed the so-called wrinkles in the galaxy and various wrinkles that form as a result of galactic collisions, researchers once again discovered something nobody expected. Here they surprisingly found somewhat recent wrinkles potentially produced in the last 3 billion years. Or to rephrase this, they basically discovered signs of a relatively recent collision, mostly because of unusual motion of stars that implied a collision 3 billion years ago. And that's actually 5 billion years later than previous assumptions. So even though previously researchers believed that the last collision was 8 billion years ago, the research here suggests otherwise. It was potentially 3 billion years ago, with many new stars added at the same time. Which is the only way we can explain such an unusual motion. With the scientists now referring to this as Virgo radial merger. Something that must have happened 2.7 billion years ago, and something that very likely brought a lot of other dwarf galaxies, which eventually became various star clusters. But exactly where they are and exactly what's left of them is still unknown. At the moment we just see the motion of stars. And so essentially these were some of the main discoveries from the Milky Way galaxy in the last few months. But there was actually another discovery that I wanted to discuss, although in this case I wanted to make a separate video about this, just because it's actually quite an intriguing story. And here we're talking about a discovery of a bizarre and really massive cloud known as the Smith Cloud that's actually going to be colliding with the Milky Way galaxy in the next 27 million years. We have no idea what effects this is going to cause, but there have been some major discoveries about this in just the last few months, so we're going to be discussing this in a video that's coming out really soon. So once again, subscribe, thank you for watching, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. We'll definitely come back and talk more about Milky Way discoveries in additional videos in the next few months. And so until then, stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.